Hey, Grant, how you doing? Hey, Kimberly, I'm doing well. Glad to see you uh, on video. Yeah, definitely great to be on the same screen. So how, um, what have you learned since quarantine? Uh, yeah, so I think right now in quarantine, everybody is trying to figure out how to continue educating themselves, how to uh, be better activists or be better allies. And one of the movies uh, that I really love that kind of touches on this in a way is What Happened, Miss Simone. And this movie's about um, Nina Simone, and she was an amazing jazz blues singer. Uh, but she was also really active in the 60s um, with the civil rights movement. So she recorded songs like Mississippi Goddamn, Young, Gifted, and Black, Four Women, you know, really classic songs um, that continue to be sampled and continue to be played at protests and movements today. And I think that, you know, it's a really great opportunity to learn not just about her activism, but also about her life. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with all your points. I remember watching that movie a few years ago and being like, wow, like I never knew this much about this person. Of course, I love documentaries. So anything documentary style was great, but it was also great to just see how she had a nice footprint in the um, civil rights movement. And she did everything she could in her power to really help move the, um, be progressive in what she could do, you know, if it was big or little, and she really made a great um, difference in the um, music and um, art community too. So I think it was really great. It's also a really interesting story because I always think of her as like this really monumental, like great person, but then they don't know about any like activism. So it was great to just see that movie and they're like, oh, wow, she did have like a piece. That was awesome. So she's not right. just about music. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with you. There's so much that, you know, you can just listen to her music and know, uh, you know, how great her voice is, but you got to really see behind the screen kind of uh, the voice um, in the documentary. But uh, yeah, how about you? What have you learned during quarantine? Yes, so quarantine has definitely taught me to really, I would say, um, dig into myself and really learn more things that I now have time to learn. So I have all this extra time and why not learn new different things. So I have really um, took to Netflix and watched Self Made. It's the Madam T.J. Walker movie. She's a self-made millionaire. Um, and she is the first person to create African-American hair products for women. And it's really great because I'm also a cosmetologist. And I was like, wow, like, I was super happy that they made a movie about this woman first because I remember learning about her about a few years ago too. And I was so inspired by her. She's the person who really inspired me to become a cosmetologist and to just know um, different things about hair and just, you know, the upkeep and all that that goes into it. And so that now that there's a movie out about her, it's a it's a series, I would say a docu-series, um, it's on Netflix. And it really breaks down her life from when she first started it to like all the way up until when her granddaughter um, continued the foundation after she's, you know, passed away and everything. But it was really great to just enrich myself and just know about the history. Um, because some of the things like now, you know, in today's age, it's a little depressing, like learning things and trying to have a positive outlook. But when you learn about people who, you know, really had a great inspirational um, educational experience that can, that you can learn from, it's like, oh my God, like I feel empowered, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, I remember yesterday in our initial conversation, you said that you really love to do hair and cosmetology. Mm -hmm. um, and so before we talked, I'd seen, you know, as I mentioned, I'd seen the first episode of it and then, got busy and didn't finish. But last night after our conversation, I finished and I binged it. And you're right, it was amazing. Uh, it was amazing to continue to learn about her life and legacy. And I really loved how at the end, they put pictures of her and her family. Um, and uh, then that inspired me to, you know, do some Googling, read some Wikipedia pages some more. So it, you're, you're exactly right. I totally agree with you there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm glad you um, liked it. <laughs> So next up is our coming of age movie that we really like. So Grant, what is your coming of age movie? What do you like about it? Yeah, so I just watched this movie a couple months ago. It's called Moonlight. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. And I think it's just a really powerful coming of age story that isn't really told a lot. And um, coming from, you know, it's a diverse perspective uh, uh, in the movie. And um, you're also able to see, you know, how relationships were formed throughout the movie and it really the movie is also a classic coming of age story you know it's 
from um, you know when he's little and literally mm -hmm. called little, and then to <laughs> his teenage years and then to adulthood, and um, you know the movie really leaves you. Um, a lot of people told me because I'm a crier in movies. A lot of people told me like you're gonna cry, you're gonna cry, and it you know it makes you so sad, but it also just leaves you with the sense of emptiness that. Mm -hmm you know, really makes you sit with it and try and, you know, think about what the movie is trying to convey and um, mm -hmm. you know, really makes you think about life in different ways, too. Yeah, I would definitely, I think so, too. I've seen the movie a good amount of times. It's my, it's my brother's favorite movie of all time. Um, so I agree it does. It is, like, through stages of the, um, of the, uh, what's it called, protagonist's life, that it's um, when he's little and then he gets older and then he's an adult and then he's like, you know, throughout his life you see different stages and different people he interacts with and um, you're able to relate to him in a, in a good amount of ways. And then you're also like, oh man, like I really wish I was in the movie just to be that person he can like, you know, rely, be dependent on and like rely on me because I feel like throughout the movie too, it's like, I feel like he always needs this consistent friend but it's like, he has a friend and it's like, he's gone. And he has another friend and then, you know, he's gone. It's like, oh, I want to be there for him. I also did a little crying too, so. Yeah, I mean, especially in the beginning of the movie when he's, you know, a child and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the guy takes him in and, him and he can stay with him and his girlfriend mm -hmm. and, you know, takes him to the, uh, to the ocean to learn to swim yeah. and everything. I mean, those moments were so touching and then he just is, you know, ripped away and killed. And so it, it was such a, that was one of the times where I was just totally floored by that because mm -hmm. I think that could have been a whole movie in and of itself, but instead it was a progression, just like, you know, you were talking about. Yes. I really hope there's a sequel, but then again, we all know sequels might not do the original movie justice. So yeah. I, I would rather keep Moonlight as like, you know, it's nice as it is um, in, in the original quality. Right. Yeah, so what about you? What is your coming-of-age movie that um, really speaks to you? I really love Aquila and the Bee. Um, I think I saw that when I was, I want to say like 12 or 13. You know, right around my stage of life where I'm like becoming um, a different person. And Aquila Anderson, I, which is who, play, who plays by Kiki Palmer. Um, there's Angela Bassett, there's also Lawrence Fishburne, so a lot of like really hard-hitting people. I'm like, wow, this movie... I feel like she'd get more credit, but it's okay. Um, Keelan the Bee really related to me because she had an obstacle that she really wanted to overcome, um, which was basically coming out of her shell where she lived um, and being this person that she didn't know she could be until Lawrence Fishburne, her mentor, really pushed her to like learn words and she was super smart and like really understand herself in that way. And I was like, wow, like she had this great light inside of her that she then you know, could share with her community, like, they all came together and kind of helped her, you know, pass the spelling bee, and I was like, oh, that's so beautiful, because it wasn't, like, to her, it was huge, which really made it so special, but to anyone else, to be like, oh, yeah, you got the spelling bee, great, but it's like, no, it was the journey that she took when she was trying to accomplish this goal, it was just like, you know, it brought her family together, it brought the community together, it brought herself to, you know, it brought her um, more closure with herself, and just helping her understand who she was as a person as she's growing up, so, I think it was a great movie. I'm about to rewatch it again just because. I know. As, <laughs> as I'm yeah. like, I don't remember the last time I saw that movie. I need to rewatch it again because I remember, you know, watching it the same age as you and uh, mm -hmm. as a kid and remembering, oh yeah, Kiki Palmer, like you know. <laughs> um, but now that we see, you know, Kiki Palmer, she's an icon. She's out in the streets, so yeah. you know, uh, it's it's time to give her some more royalty checks and watch uh, Kill and the Bee. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I really do like Kiki Palmer a lot, and I, um, when I saw her at the Black Lives Matter protest, talking to different cops and getting them to kneel, I was like, wow, like, she's really, really out here, you know, becoming an activist and really helping, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement progress and move forward, and just having a great voice and using her platform to really push it forward, too, is always great. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's move on to our next movie category, uh, feel-good movies. So what movie did you pick, uh, why, and I guess what makes you feel good about it? I really, I picked um, Cinderella with Brandy. That is by far, I would say, the best version of Cinderella made ever. Um, super, super big fan of that movie, mainly because I love Whitney Houston. 
Um, and also because it's a very diverse cast. You know, you would never really suspect what they, what they did um, in the cast. It's Whoopi Goldberg is the um, queen and the king, he's Caucasian. And then the son, he's Asian. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's okay because, you know, it's great. There's so much um, music and dancing and it's like a really, it's really nicely told. Like, you know how like, everyone knows the story of Cinderella, but it, I feel like with that, it's just, has a little extra spice you know it's a little it makes it's like things in there are very funny like not just you know cartoon or like princess funny they're like legit like I'm a regular person this is actually pretty funny and so I watched that movie I want to say a hundred times and every time I watch it's never old it's always really great um I showed my friend Jasmine the movie she loves the movie she's like wow like why wasn't this like a thing I was like it's been a thing it's just only the OGs of like Cinderella, I guess, and like princesses know about Cinderella's um, with Brandy because there's so many different renditions of Cinderella that's been made. It's like, you kind of lose track. Like, which one is this one now? It's like, there's just so many, but this is the specific one that I love because yeah. it, it never ceases to like amaze me how great it is. Yeah, I mean, it's really groundbreaking for the time too um, to have, you know, a black Cinderella, which is, I think, super great uh and you know it's so funny that you mentioned that you love Whitney Houston because I've gone through stages of my life where I went to watch every Beyonce movie that she was ever in mm -hmm. and then every Whitney Houston movie that she was ever in right and uh and so you know this movie popped up too and I'd seen it before and I watched it again and you know it was you're right it's a really amazing movie yeah 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 so what about you what is your feel-good movie so for me, I picked another movie, uh, and we, you know, we didn't do this on purpose, guys, but I picked another movie with Whoopi Goldberg in it. I picked Sister Act 1 and 2, because I think you have to watch them both. Um, Sister Act 1 and then Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, uh, which is a play on words for all you Catholic viewers out there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, you know, I really love this movie because I love music. Uh, and you know, when I went to Catholic high school, I thought this is what it was going to be like, guys. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it's going to be such happy, exciting music, and we're going to sing. Um, and uh, it was a different type of music at the Catholic school that I went to, but, um, you know, uh, you know, not saying bad things, but it definitely gave me a different viewpoint into the Catholic Church. It's not such a old stuffy type organization, but as a place where there can be, you know, some change and um, some good music, because I think music is really important. So I love this movie. Every time I watch it, it makes me feel good. And I, you know, run around the house singing the uh, songs for, for, you know, a week or so after anyways. That's awesome. I definitely have to rewatch Sister Act 1 and 2. It's been some years. Um, but now that you bring it up as your feel-good movie, I was like, you know, I need to feel good, you know, <laughs> more often and not watch the same movie. So this is a good, another one to put on my list as um, a very positive, uplifting feel-good movie. So. Yeah, I'll, uh, when you watch it, let me know and we can do, you know, a duet or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> All right, so our next movie category is best movie from childhood. So what uh, age did you watch this movie? Uh, what was your favorite memory about this movie? Tell me about what movie you picked. Yes, so I picked Cheetah Girls 2, by far the best version of Cheetah Girls, I think. And it was one, two, and three. Um, and I've seen, I watched this movie when I was about 10 years old, I want to say. Around that, like, you know, I guess, what is that, like, maybe middle school-ish, mm -hmm. but um, so I love, I've always loved Raven Simone, I mean, um, yeah, well, I was love Raven Simone when I was little, and then I saw her become a cheetah girl, and I was like, oh my gosh, she has, like, girlfriends, you know, besides Chelsea and her That's a Raven's crew, but I really did love her when um, she was transitioning into this new light of, like, you know, cheetah girls and all that stuff. The first movie was okay, and I was like, you know, it's a, that's good. Like, it's always an original. And then the Cheetah Girls 2 came out, I was like, this is made for me. Like, <laughs> this movie definitely spoke to my soul. All the songs, I have all the songs on my playlist still to this day. I'm, like, 23, right. still listening to Cheetah Girls music. But it's still great, because then it's all, it came full circle, because I would say in eighth grade, I took a trip to Spain, in mm -hmm. Barcelona where they were at and I was like oh my god I was on this little the bench where they sat and I put my leg up you know in that one scene and I was just like <laughs> feeling it so <laughs> definitely an awesome childhood movie because I was like man this is where the cheetah girls were like they did this and that's why I've always wanted to go to Spain because Spain really 
I guess it's one of the trips that I took that really helped me, you know, um, with educational purposes. I learned a lot about a different country and stayed there for about two weeks or so with my family. Traveled to different um, cities in Spain and things like that, which was really, really nice. And Cheetah Girls really helped me even want to go to Spain because it introduced me to like this whole new culture and lifestyle over there. Even though it's a little bit glimmerized in the movie, it still was like, it's still a great place to go travel and visit, learn about. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to ask you, like, I couldn't remember which Cheetah Girls movie it was, if that was the one where they went to Spain, but I definitely still, you know, have the song stuck in my head, like, we stand together. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah, so what about you, though? What is um, your best childhood movie? What, how old were you, and how did it make you feel? Uh, I, my favorite childhood movie is Tarzan, and I don't, you know, I don't really remember, like, how old I was, maybe, you know, like, five, six you know, seven, young, pretty young age, but I used to watch it all the time. And the reason that it was my favorite movie is because, um, I don't know if you guys remember the scene where like Tarzan is, he's growing up and he's like, you know, sliding through the jungle on all these vines. Yeah, there's like the montage. And so whenever, and there's a song that plays during that. Mm -hmm. And whenever that song would be playing, you know, my dad who's watching it with me would, you know, pick me up and like swing me around. And, oh. you know, like, uh, so it was like, I was in the movie. Um, <laughs> And uh, so that's just like a really um, fond memory that I have of my childhood. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, watching the movie with my parents and my dad swinging me around um, to the songs and everything. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yes, I definitely love Tarzan so much. It's on my top 10 Disney um, movie watch list. And I really, I don't know why, but I really liked Kala, uh, Tarzan's original mom, or original mom, eight mom. <laughs> um, she was great. I really did like Kerchak's character development a lot too. Right. Because at first you saw he was super grumpy. Like, I don't know what that, that ape, um, I want to call him a man. I don't know what he had for breakfast that morning. He just wasn't really feeling Tarzan. He was like, you're not one of us. And then he was like, actually you are. Sorry, son. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, that's such a, and I also just, like, as a child, I was like, I could do that. I could, you know, like, be left in the jungle or, <laughs> and, like, you know, befriend these people or these animals. And uh, so it was, you know, also kind of a dream, but, uh, you yeah. know. So, Grant, um, next is inspirational movies. What would you say is your favorite inspirational movie? Why do you like it? And everything. Yeah, I think that there's so many um, really great inspirational movies. So I would just picked one that I've recently seen. Um, it's called The 100 Foot Journey mm -hmm. and it's on Netflix. And uh, it's about the, this uh, Indian family that uh, flees India and uh, moves to Britain and then they don't like it in Britain. And then they you know, find their way to a really small French village. And uh, in the French village, you know, there's a Michelin star restaurant and they're competing with them. And so it's about the, you know, evolution of this really strenuous competition between traditional French food and Indian food, um, which is more nuanced. Uh, and then, you know, you see the characters develop and you see the cuisines develop. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm somebody who loves food. Um, I will travel anywhere just to eat. Um, and, you know, I've even scheduled trips just around where that I'm eating that day. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it was definitely a really, like, inspirational movie in saying, like, okay, you know, these people, um, you know, in the movie, they are learning to cook via their senses, and they're cooking based on intuition and taste, and um, that's something that I really try to do in my own cooking, because I, I love to cook, too. That is really interesting. I definitely want to adopt that you know making um trips around food because i also <laughs> love food but i haven't seen that movie and i really want to now because you make it sound like it's really interesting when you're like just learning about two totally different families coming together and trying to compete you know hopefully at the end do they do they become friends or they yeah i mean i don't want to spoil the end oh of course yeah. <laughs> but yeah yeah they, it ends up being like how they were super competitive and then mm -hmm. you know they become friendly and um, yeah, that's definitely going on my list because I, I think I saw the trailer and I always meant to watch it, but now I, I then you forget. And then now you say it, I was like, oh, that's the movie I need to see because it's been a minute since the trailer has been out. But I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to circle back and watch it, especially since it's on Netflix. 
I have subscriptions, so I can just <laughs> watch it real quick. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. I'm definitely yeah. a food person. Hopefully, I can learn some new recipes from the show or something. Yeah, and there's so many great like cooking shows and cooking movies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ratatouille is also a great one too. Yes. But, I do. Um, really anyways, have... So, what movie did you pick? What movie inspires you, and why? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I picked uh, Hidden Figures. So this movie is great. It came out a few years ago. It has Taraji, Jan uh, Janelle Monet, and Octavia Spencer, all very great actresses. Um, and they all play very inspirational, um, real, it's a true story, um, real African-American women who really helped with the Na the first NASA launch um, into space. Like, I think they went to the moon. Um, like, they were the ones behind... Um, the math to help get to the moon. And so Taraji plays Katherine Johnson, Octavia plays Dorothy Vaughn, and Janelle plays Mary Jackson. And these women were like these big brains, especially Taraji's character and Janelle's character. They were like really helping with um, just the calculations and how to like get to the moon safely without killing the astronauts and like all this different, it was very um, intricate what they had to do. And they really didn't get as much credit for it until, you know, later in the, in, you know, the story, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, these are the brains. You're like, the brains, like, <laughs> that's important to know, you know? So I watched that movie, didn't even know they existed, honestly. I was like, these people are, this is, this is a real story. I was like, wow, that's so inspirational. I was just like, oh my God, and they're like black women. And I was like, wow, man, like how many of these things have happened that I don't know that black women or like African American people were behind it. And you're like, oh my God, like, that's so revolutionary. Like, that's, that's incredible that they even got us to the moon. So yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean, it. you're so right is that, uh, you know, some people might have known their story and they got a little bit of recognition but not until the movie came out did everybody know their story and everybody know that it was black women behind this. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that's so important right now too, is like as much as we're fighting on the streets um, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're being active, we also should be celebrating, you know, like mm -hmm. um, black achievements. And um, really, I think yeah. that's a great movie about that. Yes, yes, yes. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about like hidden. It definitely makes the sense with the title "Hidden Figures" because you're like they're they're here, but they're just like they're like right there. You can't you don't see them until you're like they're pointed out. You're like, oh my god, wow, yeah. So let me know what you think once you see it because I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, but I really uh, enjoyed talking with you, and yes. um, it's been such a great opportunity to share and learn more about your personality through movies and. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this experience. Yes, I definitely enjoyed our um, collaboration because I um, have always been interested in who someone is through movies and knowing now a little bit more about you through movies really makes me feel like, wow, we have like a, a secret connection or something. Like we can do movies and like talk about them and share them. And it's just been great, you know, coming up with a great um, way to share our um, movie experience and our personalities through um, this platform and be able to just speak to other people and hopefully they now want to see the movies you want to see. So, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> next time I see you in person, then we're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to have watched The 100 Foot Journey. Yes. And send yeah. me more movie recommendations and uh, we'll meet up and chat about them. Yeah. Awesome. Okay.